Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And this video is just going to be a follow-up to my uh, crash into the moon with the XR2 Ravenstar. So, that uh, unfortunately, that mission failed and everybody on board perished. But uh, luckily, we have sent out another XR2 Ravenstar from the ISS. And I've already completed everything up to pretty much the point where the last mission failed for the most part. We're coming up on our orbit insertion burn, and this crew has learned from the heroic mistakes of the past crew, and we're just going to continue on from that point and try to do a successful landing. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here, and we'll just jump right into it. So let's unpause the simulation. All systems nominal. All right, change my projection over to the ship, change my distance readout. So we're coming up to the moon here, going to be at periapsis in about 3,600 seconds. So let's uh, bring up map on this side, make sure we're, well, we are referencing the moon. So we'll just select our space port, Brighton Beach, so that we can make sure we have that information on Transex. And then we'll view over to the encounter and have a look at how things are. And let me just change over to orbit line because I like that better. And this current mission has us uh, coming into the moon with a minimum altitude of about 35 kilometers. So we're planning on arriving a bit higher than the previous crew. And we're, uh, we have an off plane distance of about a kilometer. So we're pretty happy with how all that looks. So let's just go ahead and warp time forward. Let's get to where we are about a thousand seconds out. Um, and let's make it 1500. And then we're just going to take a look at how everything is looking in in uh, Transex. And then we'll make any decisions that maybe need to be made at that point as far as uh, any corrections. So we're about 1800, 17, 16, and there's about 1500. So everything has held pretty well. Uh, minimum altitude, 35 kilometers. It's that graphical glitch again. I wonder what causes that. Uh, anyway, and our off plane is still about a kilometer, so we're not gonna fiddle around with any of this. We'll take care of it. And well, actually what we can do, let's just go ahead and go to the prograde position because that's the orientation we're going to need to be in for our braking burn anyway. Come out of time warp, turn off the retrograde and let's just bump our translation thrusters Rotation. Translation. just to see if we can bring that off plane down a bit. So that's the correct direction. So I'm currently thrusting sort of down. And that number does seem to be trending down, I believe. But we'll get it pretty close. And then, of course, we'll do any refinement that we need to um, as we orbit around the moon. And yeah, that's trending down. So we'll just kind of leave it right there where it's at. Okay, let's bring up a uh, burn time calculator. And it's already set to periapsis time, and that time matches what I'm seeing over here. So we'll go ahead and plan on circularizing our burn here in uh, about 1300 seconds. So let's warp time forward to get closer to that point. And we'll see if we can do a little bit better job of controlling our periapsis. Uh, last time it, it dipped down quite a bit as part of the circularization burn because burn time calculator doesn't orient the vessel quite right. So we just rely on the retrograde autopilot and that retrograde position is not ideal for a very, very large burn like this. It's uh, the retrograde and prograde are good for basic you know, raising your orbit, lowering your orbit by, you know, a few dozen kilometers. But when you get into substantially long burns, uh, you don't actually want to be exactly prograde. You want to be a bit um, inward or outward as part of your burn. And burn time calculator does not take that into account, whereas like IMFD does. So we're coming up here on the burn about a minute. Let's go ahead and time warp to get closer to that point. Turned off the retrograde autopilot. Let's see if I can uh, control the burn a little bit. I think most likely what I'll do is I'll just abort the burn 
when we get uh, you know when we get close to orbit circularization and then I'll just clean up the last little bit myself so with that in mind I'm just gonna leave the retrograde autopilot on so I'm gonna warp through the burn for the first part a little bit longer okay so we just have uh, seven seconds left on the burn what I'm kind of keeping an eye on is the uh, the periapsis And okay, it actually did a pretty good job that time because right as I hit to cancel the burn, um, burn time calculator kicked off like a, either just a millisecond before or a few milliseconds after. So that time it actually worked out. So we're at, we're orbiting currently around, you know, 34, 35 kilometers. And this crew of, uh, th this crew has done research and, and found out once again, and the previous crew knew this, but they were just living dangerously, but that the highest peak on the moon is 11 kilometers. So this crew is making sure that we stay well above that. Um, we, we just, we didn't do our research to find out, you know, because most of the peaks on the moon are actually substantially lower than 11 kilometers. It's just that uh, there are other peaks that are, you know, three kilometers, four kilometers, and, and the previous crew nor this crew has done their research to find out when we're when we're going around the moon where are those peaks and valleys at so we're just going to be more cautious this time and try to make sure that uh, we stay well above um, the highest peaks so that uh, just in case our path happens to go across one of those we don't run the risk of hitting it all right let's bring up base sync and let's target Brighton Beach and you can see our off base distance is uh, two kilometers now one thing I'm curious why am I not getting the PLC um, I'll have to I'll have to look into that because usually uh, burn time calculate or rather base sync will tell you which orientation you need to burn in not that it really matters that much because we can just test with translation one way or the other but but I've always liked that um, that base sync will tell you that so there's some I'm guessing there's some setting here I don't have let me just run through these really quick that's not it okay so that's just going through the the length I wonder if it's because I have the length too long so let me just set the length down to like four orbits it doesn't seem to have anything to do with it so we should be referencing the moon already mm, okay I'm not sure but yeah usually Usually, burn time calculator will tell you like when you get to this point <clears throat> if you're gonna if you're going to be need to if you need to do a um, anti-normal or a normal plus burn. But it's not giving me that information. We won't worry about it. We're just gonna warp time forward to that point. And we're basically there, so we're already in the retrograde position. Translation rotation. Oops. Uh, so with the translation thrusters, I'm just going to try uh, burning down first, so anti-normal. That's the wrong way, so I'm going to go the other way. And that's just going to improve our off-base distance. Again, we don't have to worry about the off-base distance being zero. It's not like DT min or plane alignment. Uh, the off-base distance is just how close we are to the dead center of the base. And it, it doesn't matter if we're zero or if we're 10 or 20 100 meters out it it doesn't really matter so that's not something we have to worry too much about but if it's two or three kilometers out i would say it's worth making an adjustment um so now i want to see i want to make sure i have my communications set up so i'm going to bring up com nav and control i to bring up the object info and we're going to look at the base for Brighton Beach, which for some odd reason is all the way down here at the bottom. The long range is 11630. So this is something I should have set up earlier, but I forgot. So we'll go this way, 11630. And we're gonna go to the landing pad 2, 13230. So 13230. 
All right, so our communication is all set up. So now I just want to get around to a point where I am halfway around from the base and I will bring down my, my periapsis. I'll bring it down not as much as we did last time because the previous crew sacrificed their lives to find out that you can't go that low. So in honor of their memory, <laughs> we, will, we will do better than they did. So what am I looking for here? Um, base sink. And uh, like the previous crew, we just tend to watch for uh, this number right here when it stops. So currently it's counting down because we're getting closer to the base, but we're gonna pass over the base this time and go all the way around. So we're gonna go around and we just jump to four kilometers. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of another correction at this node here. And we're coming up to that node in just a minute, but with time warp, it'll just be a couple seconds. And yeah, we're basically there. So in the previous node, we had to translate down. So this one will be no doubt up. Yeah. Nope, I'm wrong. It's still translating down. Okay, that's surprising. So a four kilometer off base is, uh, it, that's a bit. So I, it's worth making that correction. And I believe when we do our deorbit burn, it'll throw off our distance again. I don't know which way it's going to go. So I'm just going to bring it down to a low number. Something like that is perfectly fine. Actually, let's go this way because it's counting down. And now we're just going to go around to the point where our distance from the base is at its highest point. And when it starts counting back down, that's when we know we're halfway around. And I remember it's about five point something, but I didn't pay attention to what the decimal was, but it'll be when we're straight across. And unfortunately, I did not think to set up the landing uh, when the lights were going to, when the sun was going to be over Brighton Beach. So we're going to be landing in the dark. Okay, so that number is it's still counting up. So it's uh, five. I want to say it was like 5.3, but, but before it got to 5.4. So 5.38394. Okay, so it's so it does get to 4. So 5.4 and now it's counting down. So we'll go to the retrograde position, bring up orbit and just do a main engine burn in the retrograde position to bring our orbit down to um I feel like we could probably do, just let me think. So at this point, let me go down to uh, 0 0.1. So at this point, we're two kilometers higher than the highest peak on the moon. I don't know where the highest peak is at. If it's somewhere up on the poles, then obviously we don't have to worry about it. And again, other than that one high point on the moon, most other peaks are only three or four kilometers. So I would say we could probably get away with, you know, eight uh, or like six to eight. But just to be extra cautious, let's go with 11.8. That way we know for sure we're clear of the very highest point. And something that would be interesting to do. I wonder, I don't think map gives you like topography. I mean, it gives you these layouts but I don't think it actually tells you like yeah you can't really tell like what is a high point what's a low point because that would be interesting to know because landing I think is a, it's a lot more efficient if you can arrive at the base and just be just right above the ground uh, the, the, all the time you have to spend hovering down is a bit inefficient now you can't there are uh, the XR2 has an auto lander built in which I think does a pretty good job if I recall correctly, it'll just let you free fall so that you're not burning fuel. And then when it needs to start breaking, it'll break at the right time. It's not perfectly efficient, but it's probably better than I could do manually. Uh, but with all that said, we'll just continue on. And we can see that our off base distance is counting up a bit. So we'll do a bit of a correction here when we get to uh, this point. 
coming up on that point in just 30 seconds, but with time warp, it'll be very quick. All right, and we're almost there. We're in translation, so let's see. So I need to translate up. Actually, those numbers are counting down. So I'm just going to leave it kind of where it's at right there. And again, you know, 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, it's not a big deal. Rotation. All right, let's uh, rotate so that we are wings level with the with the surface. And and I'm just going to put in just a bit of rotation up just a control thrust, maybe two, no, just one. That way, as we warp time forward, okay, so we will do two control thrusts. That way, as we warp time forward, our vessel kind of stays nose level with the, uh, with the retrograde position. Uh, we're done with base sync, so let's bring up, um, so we've already got our comm nav dialed in. Let's bring up VOR, VTOL. And this one will come online when we're 500 kilometers from the base. And this is our current position, and we're moving towards the base this way. So I'm going to put in one more control thrust up to keep our pitch more or less level with the ground so that we're not spinning around as we go. I could use the uh, hold, the horizon hold, but I don't want to waste the RCS on that. Now I'm going to put in a control pitch down. And last time we overshot the base substantially. Um, no, that was with the that was with the delta glider that we overshot the base. Okay, so here we are. We're 500 kilometers out, and everything looks pretty well lined up. So I don't think I need map anymore. So I'm going to bring up burn time calculator on the side. And I don't, we don't need to switch modes, but I'm going to anyway, just so I don't have something there counting down. And I'm going to put in the delta velocity, uh, this number right here, 1.683. So 1.683. And according to burn time calculator, I need uh, just around 69 kilometers to be able to burn, to be able to, if I'm using the full power of the main engines, I need about 69 kilometers to eliminate all that speed. So if I were to start to burn at like 100 kilometers out, you know, I, I could do that if I weren't using the full power of the main engines, but to get the most efficient use of your fuel, this is kind of how you want to do it. I might start to burn just a touch early, but not too much because I, again, I don't want to break and be hovering at, uh, you know, substantially far out from the base. Okay, so now I'm going to warp time forward, and when this number here gets to about, uh, well, when it gets down to 100, I'm going to come back to real time, because it, it does tick by pretty quick. So we're coming up. And now I'm going to go uh, level horizon. And I'm going to get ready to do the burn at 70 kilometers. Let's go with 70. Because with my reaction time, I think that'll be pretty close. Let's go now. So that should eliminate all of our velocity right as we're approaching the base. We may be a few hundred meters out in front, but that's okay. Now I'm going to switch over to nav 2, and this will come online when we're 25 kilometers from the landing pad. And we will start falling here pretty rapidly, so I'm actually going to switch over to uh, surface now so I can pay attention to that. But we are up high enough that I don't have to worry about my, I don't have to worry about falling and hitting the ground real soon. All right, 42 more seconds on the burn, 20 kilometers from the pad. Falling at 33 meters a second. Have that information here and here. 
12 kilometers out, 28 seconds left on the burn. Now, if I'm in rotation, this little bit of off, uh, but I can't hardly ever remember which way to rotate in order to correct that, but it's not enough for me to worry about right now. But I can see that the arrow is not perfectly lined up. 3.5 kilometers out, nine seconds left on the burn, falling at 73 meters a second, so we're gonna start engaging hover because we are descending pretty quick now. Okay, so uh, that burn is complete. We're 11 kilometers up. We're one, we're about two kilometers out. So let's, Translation, rotation. let's rotate so that we're, let's get rid of some of that hover because we're gonna start climbing. Uh, let's rotate around so that the landing pad is directly in front of us. And that'll be the case when that green crosshair is um, directly at this point on the VOR. And we're currently moving with a little bit of uh, velocity off to the side. So let's translate um, forwards and a bit lateral. Okay, now we're translating directly towards the, the base. Let's go ahead and put our wheels down. APU offline. Control A, turn on the APU, add in a bit more hover, just to make sure I don't fall too fast. Press G to put down the gear. Gear down and locked. And let's move forward a little bit faster because we are Still two kilometers from the middle of the pad. We're at seven kilometers in altitude, falling at 50 meters a second. That descent rate is slowly slowing down, but I'm gonna add in just a bit more hover. I'm probably gonna have to use the altitude hold at some point so I can concentrate on my alignment with the pad and not have to worry about my descent. Ideally, you do both of those at the same time, and you do it perfectly efficiently, but I'm a human. <laughs> that was a mistake I meant to do. So I'm going to take out some hover now, because our, our descent is pretty well under control. We're one kilometer from the center of the pad. Oh, I did not mean to leave the, uh, the main engine burning all that time, so let me just... Okay, but it worked out. I thought I was moving forward too fast for the retro engines to control, but all right, we're 500 meters from the middle of the pad. We're moving forward at 25 meters a second. And let's eliminate, let's Rotation, translation. translate just a bit that way so that we're lined up and let's take out some of that forward. Let's take out all the forward at this point. Rotation, translation. Okay, so we're pretty much, oh, we're definitely over the pad right now. So I'm, and my descent is under control. Okay, so it, it's, I think it's a way, it's a bit inefficient to worry too much about being perfectly lined up over the pad because you focus on that so much that um, you just waste a bunch of fuel. So I'm just going to try to zero out my velocity at this point, my horizontal speed. Get it as close to zero as I can. Now that won't hold perfectly. So now I'm over the pad and I can just concentrate on my descent. Um, again, I, I don't like any like so-called simulation where you have to use the external view because I don't think that's realistic because if you're piloting a plane or a spacecraft you're in the pilot seat you're not able to magically jump outside and see it with this out-of-body experience but uh, just for the sake of the visual not, not that we have to look at the outside because we don't but just because you know it's interesting to see I will take a look at the outside 
just to show where we're at, even though it doesn't show up much because we are on the dark side of the moon right now. But we are pretty stable right over the middle of the pad. We can translate a little bit if we want to zero out, but that little bit of horizontal speed seems to actually be taking us ever so slightly closer to the middle of the pad, so I'm just gonna let that go for now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my hover so we can just fall just a tad bit faster, but we have to keep a close eye on that because it will get out of control. We're in a vacuum, so there's no terminal velocity. We don't, we don't hit a maximum speed and then s suddenly stop falling. So putting in a bunch of hover now to... Uh, so now I just wanna concentrate on getting the, the hover under control with translation thrusters. So I wanna find that sweet spot where where I have enough hover to just kind of almost keep me buoyant, but then I can use translation thrusters to So right now my vertical speed is increasing ever so slightly. So if I put in down trunk uh, you know if I thrust out of the bottom of the XR2, it will slow down my vertical speed. So I feel like this is the point where I want to keep my hover engines locked. And I'm going to try to just uh, keep the vertical speed around uh, I might need just a touch more hover, but but if I can get my vertical speed down to around five or six, then I can just sustain that until we're until we're ready to touch down, and then we can slowly bleed off our hover fall. All right, so we're drifting just a bit off the center of the pad, but I don't know quite which direction we need to go. That seems to be making things worse, so let's go this way. That seems to be helping, but let me not focus on this too much. All right, I'm gonna put in just a bit more hover now. You are clear to land. So we're about 1.5 kilometers up. And I just put in one more press of hover to bring down the vertical speed. And once I get it where I want, I'm gonna press the period key to take out just that little bit of hover. Uh, if we were doing more of an absolute beginner approach, we could just go to the cockpit of the XR2 and press auto land and it would take care of our descent for us and then we could just completely concentrate on the distance to the center of the pad. But uh, since, I, since I've been away for a bit, um, I kind of want the experience of doing as much as I can manually. Just to re-familiarize my hands, build back up that muscle memory. All right, so I'm going to take a look outside really quick so we can see our situation. 900. And we did put our landing gear down. I can see it even though it's black as night outside. 800. So let's take out some of that. 700. All right, I'm going to add in just one more to click of hover now so our vertical speed will start getting closer to what I want for actual touchdown so we're about 500 meters up that's usually the point that I look for to put down the landing gear I listen for that 500 meter call out and you can see our vertical speed is going down let me take out a little bit of hover I want to try to keep the vertical speed close to the point where you know, if we were to touch down at that speed, we wouldn't wreck the gear. And right now we're in excess of that vertical speed, although it might be different on the moon. All right, I'm gonna put back in just a bit of hover. Because you can see with one click of hover in either direction, it sends our vertical speed one way or the other. 
and then we get down to about about that point about right there and I'm gonna take out one tick of hover because now I can pretty much control it just with uh, translation thrusters so you can see if I put in a bit of two which pushes the vessel up ever so slightly all right our distance to the middle is okay so I'm not gonna mess with that full focus now on our vertical 75. speed I'm going to take out one more click of hover. Nope. Add in one more. Alright, I panicked and put in a bit more hover than was needed. So now I'm actually forcing myself down. Alright, taking out all hover, turning off the level horizon, and we'll press the brakes just to make sure, well, APU's not on, and press the brakes just to make sure that the brakes are locked. And uh, that's it. Successful landing. We're a half meter off dead center of the pad, but, uh, you know, anything within, I think it's 20 meters and you're on the pad, so we're all good there. All right, so I just wanted to uh, do one more follow-up to that series just to make sure that I didn't leave it kind of hanging where it was, where we, you know, bounced off the side of a lunar mountain. So that's going to be it for this series now, officially. And uh, next time, I'm not quite sure. I don't have in mind yet what I want to do next, but uh, we'll figure it out in the next video, if there is one. So with all that said, I will see you next time. Maybe. <laughs>